This video is about the movement of the shoulder. Now, although the shoulder is often talked about as a single joint, we actually have movement occurring at two different joints. First, there's the glenohumeral joint, a ball and socket joint formed between the head of the humerus and the glenoid fossa of the scapula. Much like the ball and socket joint in the hip, there are three pairs of movements we can perform at this joint. Flexion will bring the limb anteriorly, whilst extension will move it posteriorly. Abduction takes the limb away from the midline, and adduction adds it back. Finally, the humerus can spin within the joint, resulting in medial rotation or lateral rotation. We also have movement of the shoulder girdle, the group of bones that connect the upper limb to the trunk. Primarily, these are movements of the scapula relative to the body. For example, the scapula can move up and move down. These movements are called elevation and depression. Now, the great thing about these movements is that if someone asks you to demonstrate elevation and depression, even if you can't remember them, you'll probably get it right. The scapula can also move anteriorly and posteriorly around the ribcage. Protraction brings the scapula forward, allowing us to reach further when we want to grab something, or if you're feeling angrier, to punch something. Retraction brings the scapula back towards the spine, and this is the movement an archer uses when drawing their bow back. Finally, the scapula can also rotate, and these movements are named after the motion of the inferior angle. If it moves outwards, away from the body, we call this lateral rotation. But if it passes inwards towards the midline, it's called medial rotation. Lateral rotation of the scapula is vital for normal movement of the upper limb, such as throwing your arms in the air like you just don't care. The glenohumeral joint allows us to abduct the limb to around 90 degrees. However, at this point, the tubercles of the humerus make contact with the acromion process, and we're unable to abduct the joint any further. So, how can we do movement like this? Well, to do this, we need the shoulder girdle to rotate laterally, taking the upper limb with it. As the limb comes back down, medial rotation will return the scapula to its starting position. Those are the major movements of the shoulder. Remember, we have these two separate joints, and that each of those joints will have its own set of movements. 